Hello guys and welcome back. Today I have my March favorites video and I almost skipped recording this video altogether just because it's been a crazy month. The Sephora sale is happening right now and I've already recorded a uh, Sephora favorites pretty much or recommendation video. So I didn't want to be too repetitive, but I do have some products here that I've been loving so much in the past month and I thought I would just share them with you. It's going to be a little bit more of a chill video, a little bit more relaxed. Uh, usually I try to apply the products on for you and do inserts. This video is just going to be me talking about the products. I am behind many videos. I've had sickness in the family and so I didn't want to make it too difficult for me to record. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be chill. I hope you guys will enjoy it. Grab yourself something to drink, something to eat, hang out with me, and let's talk about makeup. I do have some perfumes. I've acquired a couple amazing perfumes in March, and I'm very excited to talk about them. Uh, some house candles, stuff like that, and then the rest is makeup. I will put timestamps down below. If you're not interested in a section, you can just kind of skip ahead. So Let's talk about my house, I, I guess, cleaning candle supply. I pulled this from my kitchen counter. Um, so this is from Home Court and I've discovered them, I think last year, and I had some of their uh, winter scents, their balsam candle and their cleaning supply. This is a soap and then a surface cleaner. And I have discovered their new scent, which is limited edition. It is the Mandarin Basil. Wow. Just wow. First of all, it smells fruity and very basil-y, a little bit minty. Wow. The candle is so different than anything that I've tried. I absolutely love it. I have used it so much and I feel like I've barely made a dent. I've only had this for maybe like two, three weeks, but I cannot stop burning the candle and the soap is fantastic. It lathers really well. It's so beautiful. And then the surface cleaner, again, it cleans so well my counters. I have quartz countertops and this cleans them so well. They look shiny once I'm done and the scent, I've had a lot of people over in the past two, three weeks and everybody that uses the soap or smells the candle are like, wow, what is that? Write it down for me. It is very interesting. You need to love basil. If you don't like the smell of basil, you're going to hate this, but this is that perfect kitchen, fresh spring summer scent. It is fantastic. I'm going to have to make sure I stock up on this scent just because it's beautiful. So I thought I would mention that. And then I think that's it actually. The rest are fragrance and makeup. So for fragrance, I really have loved March. I've discovered some amazing fragrances and rediscovered some older ones that I just absolutely love. So I'm going to start with one that I purchased myself and it wasn't one that I initially wanted, but after smelling it in store multiple times, it is an expensive one. So I went back and forth and making sure I really enjoy the scent, the longevity and everything. And that is Initio Narcotic Delight. So this is a cherry fragrance and I am not a huge fan of cherry. I don't love Lost Cherry from Tom Ford. It's fine. It's fine, but I wouldn't pay the money for it. And overall, it's just... Cherry can pull very almondy on me and a little bit sickening, a little bit too sweet. Now this one does have cherry in the top note and that's the reason why I almost skipped on it. I didn't even want to smell it. But once they put it on, wow, it developed on me in a more smokier, still sweet from the cherry, but it was not intoxicating, like headache inducing, but such an interesting it's definitely an initial fragrance. You'll know that it's an initial fragrance. They definitely have that strong, intense fragrance. But probably my favorite cherry fragrance that I've ever tried. I'm going to pull up the notes just so I won't 
butcher everything that I'm saying. It has great reviews, 4.7. So it is a sweet note on the top from the cherry, the pink pepper, black pepper. Middle, you have that cognac and I can definitely smell that. It's not as boozy as Angel Share, for example. It's a little bit softer. And then you, the base is tobacco and vanilla. I, I am in love with this fragrance and it's very interesting because on me it pulls much sweeter than it pulls on Andrew and we both wear it I adore it the one thing that I've noticed with this is that when I spray it the first couple of hours it's intense I smell it and then I personally kind of stop smelling it as strongly yet everybody around me can really smell it. So I think I am getting used to it a little bit more because I remember I went to a dinner and I had this on for many, many hours and I thought, oh, maybe nobody's going to smell me or the scent maybe evaporated. And then I went to somebody's house and I walked in the room and before they even hugged me, they were like, wow, you smell so good. So I think this is very long lasting and it projects really well, but I personally can get used to it a little bit more, even though every time I turn, I smell it around me, but it's not as intense as first application. I hope I'm making sense, but I love this fragrance. It is beautiful, definitely a staple in my collection from now on. Now the next fragrance is one that I am baffled how it is not viral. It is so beautiful. This was sent to me by Twisted Lily, but they will usually reach out and ask if I want to try any fragrance. And usually the fragrances that I may ask for are ones that I either know I love or I've tested out or I ask for samples first. But with this one, I went fully blind and I was like, I just, I just want to try that. It sounds fantastic. Um, there's a few reviews, but overall I haven't heard a ton of people talking about it. And that is Tamin Patiala. Again, I don't know how this is not viral. This is the perfect mix of Baccarat 540 with the Lina just airier and more fresh, yet it still has a lot of uh, strength to it and a lot of projection. It's a masterpiece. It truly is a masterpiece. Definitely rose fragrance, but it is done so elegantly. It does not smell mature at all. It's fresh. It's a very addictive. I am just in love, in love. Now let me pull up the notes. Okay, so top notes, aldehydes, citruses. Yes, yes, it has that cleanliness freshness to it in the top the middle rose orange blossom again yes and then the base amber oak moss and musk i would say that this is just more intricate than it sounds i feel like it becomes a little bit earthy like it's a very fresh in the beginning you definitely smell that rose and i will say even though the middle notes has rose i feel like i smell it on the base as well but it definitely becomes a little bit more earthy, that mossiness in it. Don't be scared of that because I feel like it grounds the fragrance to where it's not too sweet. It's not headache inducing. It's a masterpiece, guys. It is a masterpiece. The bottle is heavenly. I do have a coupon code with Twisted Lily. I'll put it in the screen. I'll put it in the description down below. You can save 10%. And it is fantastic. Truly one that I think anybody's going to love. I think going blind by on this one is very, very safe. If you like rose. If you don't, then don't. The next one is one that I think I've mentioned before. It is the Fleur Father Figure. I have used this so much. It's kind of that day-to-day day fragrance. For example, this one from Tamin is more elegant in a way. It can be definitely a signature scent. I just, I want to keep this for when I'm a little bit more dressed up. It's, it's a very elegant fragrance. But this one, I can wear looking a very sleek and nice and dressed up, but at the same time with leggings and flip-flops and a t-shirt and kind of messy bun, I feel like it would still work. This is one that works any day, any occasion. It's definitely strong enough on me. I've heard some people saying that it's an intimate scent. Not on me. 
not on me. Everybody can smell this. I walk in a room and you can smell it. Again, it, it's kind of that fig scent and it has auris in it and I really can smell that. It sell, settles down a little bit warmer on the skin. Beautiful scent from Flora, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, that's it for fragrances. Let's move on to makeup. One product that I wanna mention that I've really, really loved is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Nice and Might Hue Drops. I was gonna say Dew Drops, but it's the Hue. This is more of a bronzy Dew Drops. It is still glowy. It still has the same properties, this nice cinnamite in it as the original, but this has a, a hue of bronziness to it, and I adore it. Uh, I like the original one, but this I see so many more results just because it gives me that bronziness and I think it is one of my favorite kind of base bronzy tones. Now I really like this one from here from Shanta Kai, but this is an arm and a leg, okay? And I have been sparing with it just because it's so expensive, but this can pull a little bit too warm on some people. I really enjoyed on myself, but this one, I think it's much more universally flattering. Of course, if you have deeper skin tone, even tan, it's not gonna show up the bronziness on it, but it will give you that beautiful glow and the serum properties to it. This surprised me. I tried it at Sephora and I knew the sale was coming up, but it was like weeks away and I used it on my hand and I just couldn't stop myself from like looking and comparing my hands. And so I just pulled the trigger and bought it before the sale. Um, and I don't regret it. I think it's beautiful. I think I even put on my Sephora recommendations because I love it so much. And it gives uh, a glow moisturizing to the skin and I use it pretty much as a primer. However, I've used it by itself and I think it is beautiful. So that's pretty much the only primer skincare thing that I have to mention this month. Um, again, I'm still on my Prada foundation kick. I really have loved it. And my CL, the, these are the two that I recommended for the Sephora uh, sale as well. The CL, I think it feel like I've been using it more because it's a little bit less fancy. I just put like two drops and just use my fingers, put it all over my face, and it's just easy, a little bit lighter coverage, but both of those are fabulous. However, like I mentioned, I've just been a little bit absent on YouTube and I have so many videos that I want to record and reviews and I didn't get around to recording the Lisa Eldridge skin tint and I also have the lip liners from her. So if you are interested in a kind of full day wear test, let me know and I will absolutely record it. I know I'm late to the party, but I have purchased these the second they arrived and these are the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Enhancing Tint. I have shade six and shade eight and I will say shade six I picked up the first time, but it is quite um, not gray, I don't wanna say that, but I am a little bit more tan lately, and this is just a little bit light for me, very neutral, but you can kinda of see that it can make it look a little bit gray on me, just because I have quite a lot of tan and bronziness to my skin. And so I've decided to purchase shade eight, and that is my perfect shade right now. I've actually combined them um, whenever I didn't have any self tanner on, I felt like combining them was a good shade. Shade six will be great for winter time, but shade eight is my favorite shade right now. It gives a little bit of a glow, um, nothing too much, but wow. Wow. I knew from the description and the application that I've seen online that I would love these, but this has replaced my daily skin tint. It is a, one of my favorite products. I know her foundation is kind of a hit or miss. It can be absolutely beautiful on many people. I adore it. I just have to moisturize under it real well, but some people just didn't love it. But I think this is beautiful. I don't know who's not gonna like it because it's not a super oily base or super glowy. It just becomes like the skin tint. It doesn't become too glowy or oily, yet even on my dry skin, it works so well and it's buildable. I've heard some reviews that said, oh, it is the lightest coverage I've ever had. And I 
I don't agree. I am able to build this up to a light medium coverage and it's one of the things that I love about it so much that I could add a little bit more and it will it will build up. So on me, I adore it. It's probably my favorite release from Lisa Eldridge altogether. I adore it. For concealer, I have two here that I discovered and have been loving. The Cali Ray in Warm Glow. This is my corrector. I have three shades, but this is the one that I use the most because I use it as a corrector. It uh, evens out my under eyes. It's not too intense. It's not like uh, dry at all. It's actually quite luminous. So I really like that. I can wear that on its own as well. But the Say Concealer has surprised me so much. I have shade six and shade nine. Shade nine is good for kind of all over the skin. Shade six, I kind of use it under my eyes. And the formula of this is lighter than the Tower 28, for example. That one, I think they're both called serum concealers, but I consider this more of a true serum concealer because it's thinner, yet it's a little bit buildable. Like I feel like I can get a medium coverage out of this one. Uh, the Tower 20 is a little creamier and thicker to it, which is great. I absolutely adore that concealer, but this one feels a little thinner, a little bit more hydrating, yet it sets down. So it doesn't stay sticky on the skin. I've gone days where I don't even powder this and it's fine. But if I want this to completely stay on all day and for it to not crease whatsoever, I will have to powder. But I'm very impressed with the Say Concealer. I did not love their original concealer. It was way too glowy for me, too almost sticky, but this one I adore. So I'm, I'm very glad it works. Oh, I forgot about one product and that is the Merit Stick Foundation, the Minimalist it's called. And I keep finding myself reaching for this on a daily basis. I like that I can just do a few swipes and blend it in with my fingers. I can build it up a little bit. And so I overall have been loving this. I pair it with the Merit Oil and I feel like this combo is just absolutely gorgeous. If you have dry skin, it's it's fantastic, these two. This is not sponsored. However, I have worked with Merit before and hopefully continue to work with them because I love their products so much. And this I've been reaching for a lot this past month. It's one of those products that I forget to mention to you guys, but it's always in my makeup bag. You know, so I just thought I would I would put it in here. For powders, everything is the same. I have been getting a lot into House Labs products and, oh, here it is. I've pulled out their powder again and I've always liked it, but lately I've been reaching for it a lot more. Under the eyes, I still like my Huda or my Givenchy, but just overall, this does have a beautiful blurring effect. And again, I've been really into House Labs and I've purchased from the sale quite a few things from them. And I thought, why not pull it back out? And I've been loving it as well. So that's a, another good rediscovery. For bronzers, talking about House Labs, I've pulled out my bronzer from House Labs. This is in the shade four and it's a little bit light for me right now. However, I did pick up shade six in the sale and that's gonna be a perfect perfect summer shade for me but this is such a blendable easy bronzer it's not glowy but it has this almost creaminess to it gorgeous gorgeous bronzer I feel like I can add and add and add and it's never going to be too much or splotchy it's a very blendable beautiful and I'm excited for a deeper shade um, besides that I'm still into my makeup by Mario ones I feel like these come out in the spring summer um, I, I have nothing else to say about that but one that I have found very reliable it's the NARS Laguna bronzer this is the bronzing cream it looks absolutely disgusting guys but I've been reaching for this as a more of an intense bronzer contour and I find it very reliable it's not too emollient and slippery so if I have more of a full face of makeup this is what I reach for 
it's it's beautiful and it's another one like the merit stick that i reach for a lot without sharing on youtube and i'm making a point to share the products that are in my personal makeup bag not just in my makeup room that I reach for a lot. And this is one of them. For blushes, this has been a good month for blushes. I've discovered the Say blushes actually a couple months ago, I wanna say, but this color right here, Cutie, is my favorite. It's one that I reach for over and over again. I am trying to decide if this is my favorite liquid blush just formula wise from say and i really think it is i like it better than the rare beauty i even like it better than cl although cl and this are right neck and neck because they both give a beautiful kind of dewy finish without it being sticky or too wet i love the colors from say a lot you get so many options but this one has been one that i've reached for so much and i can put it on my skin and then blend it out i don't have to be too careful i can literally use my fingers i want to um try the color chili i think i've heard that that one's beautiful i don't own that but this i've been using it almost daily um another blush is the nude sticks blushes i have tried these a long time ago and then i saw them on sale at ulta 50 percent off so i picked up two colors i picked up sunkissed and bareback bareback is a beautiful more of a just soft rosy color quite light for me right now i feel like i have to be just a little bit less tan than now for it to work perfect i still like it but sunkissed wow this shade it is fantastic and i've heard about it a while back look at that it's almost like a bronzer blush in one and on my skin right now being tan it's it's fantastic it is so so gorgeous i love the finish of these blushes how easy they are i even put them on my lips and so another product that it's been around for many many years like bareback used to be like my go-to back in the day and i decluttered it and now it's it's back into my collection and then the last blush is a newer one and it is again from house labs i told you i've been into house labs and these are the new colors and we have French Rosette and Fire Moon today. I'm, I'm, what am I wearing today? I don't remember. I think one of these, oh, I think I put a little bit of Fire Moon and then just a little bit of French Rosette in the center. I actually could add a little bit more because I put this makeup on hours ago. I was hoping I could have recorded earlier, but it didn't happen. But look at that. That is so beautiful. Again, this is the French Rosette. And I like both of them. I thought maybe that I liked this one more in the beginning. But lately, I've been putting the Fire Moon more towards the end here. And I think it is stunning. Look at that. So these are two new blushes that I think are absolutely worth it beautiful the colors are incredible and i picked up the pomelo peach also from the sephora sale which the haul should come up very soon so those are the blushes that i've been reaching for this month on the highlighter nothing new here i have tried the um fenty new demi glow highlighters and my favorite color is too too much and it's what i'm wearing today and I've discovered with this that you have to be very careful for they are so intense. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know why they call this demi, but the formula is so soft. There's no glitter in here, nothing. I don't see any glitter, extremely smooth. And I've learned that if I take a fluffier brush that's more airy, I take a little bit, use it on my hands first and then go over my cheek the cheeks it gives the most luminous gorgeous glow with no glitter again so i really have learned to love this one this is 03 to too much the other ones are a little bit too light for me so they're super intense and i am considering these were sent to me but i am considering picking up the shade four 
It's a little bit more like my skin could, skin tone. And for summertime, I think it will work well. I'm gonna go test it in store, but the formula is fantastic. We have some lips and eyes. On the eyes, I have three palettes here. Actually, there's a, the Natasha Denona Hyper Natural one. I think it's in my makeup bag. I've traveled with that a lot. It has the blush, the bronzer, and five shades. I adore that palette. I don't know if it was released last month or two months ago, but a beautiful palette. If you like makeup that's kind of one and done, super easy, fast, it's definitely worth it. The Groundworks Danessa Myricks, fantastic. I've already done a full review on this. I've showed you different looks and I love it. Whenever I, I reach for it, it just makes me happy because I can create all these kinds of different lip looks. Like I feel like I could use a little bit of this in the center here. I love the formula so much. I love the colors. I use them on the cheeks, lips, even on the eyes. I think they look fantastic. I love my neutral one um, so much. And this is getting, I wanna say just as much use as the neutral one. And it's a great release from Danessa Myricks. And then um, the Makeup by Mario. Oh no, I got the wrong one. Uh, this is not the new one, the neutral one. Where is it? Here we are much better. This is the new Makeup by Mario eyeshadow palette, the neutrals. I've used it in many videos and it truly is one of those palettes that lives right here in front of me and I reach for it almost daily. It's one that I don't have to think about. It's just the colors that I like. If you want a little bit more cool tone, you can use uh, this color right here. But I would say this is a perfect neutral all matte palette. Love everything about it. And then another one that I'm kind of sprinkling it in here um, because it's a little bit newer, but since I bought it, I've been just falling in love with. And I'm actually gonna put this in my Sephora haul because I picked it up not too long ago. I should have waited for the Sephora sale, but I had a gift card, anyway, it was it was meant to be. But uh, this is the YSL in the shade 200. It's what I'm wearing on my eyes right now. Out of the four YSL quads that I have, this is my favorite. And this is the one that I initially skipped over, just these warm tones. You know, I was not very pulled because the other one seemed so much more exciting. But this one on my skin tone, I think it's the most flattering. You have a beautiful sparkle topper. It's a little bit bronzy, but it's not too much. But the mattes here, the mattes is what sells me this palette. So I just wanted to sprinkle this in because I've only had it for a couple of weeks, but I really, really love it. This is Future Tanya. I finished my recording. I heard it left and then I remembered. I forgot to mention my mascara that I've discovered that I adore it. This is the Swede Cloud Mascara. Now, I don't discover mascara as often that I enjoy, but this one, they sent to me multiple things and out of everything, this is glorious. It's one of the mascaras that I've been wearing for the past month, I would say. Now, Every time I put it on the top lashes, it gives me a lot of volume, a lot of length as well, but I still can't use it on my lower lashes. I've used it once and it was fine. And then I used it another time and I had some smudging here, which is extremely common. I would say 99.9% .9 of mascaras do that unless it's tubing. So on the top, it has not smudged at all. I didn't notice any smudging on anywhere around it except on like by high cheekbones. It has one of those plastic wands and I mean I don't I wouldn't say it's painful but if you poke yourself it's not the most pleasant <laughs> pleasant experience but I can build this mascara up so much even now like I can build this up and it will last all day long. I'm not 100% sure if you can find it anywhere else except their website. It's a Swedish brand, if I'm not mistaken, but I will link it down below. If I find any other location, I would say it's worth it. I, I'm gonna repurchase this one for sure. We have a couple lip liners. I've talked about my Freck 
lip liners. I've put these in my recommendations video. It is one of the most long lasting lip liners that I have, beautiful neutral colors. And the formula is, it glides really well, creamy, but it will set. So you blend it in, it sets, and it lasts so long. The Hourglass lip liners are the other ones that I've been reaching for a lot. However, Lisa Eldridge. Again, I should have done a full dedicated video on the skin tint and these, and I, I can still do that if you want to see swatches of the lip liners from Lisa Eldridge. Now, these are a little different um, than her original. The original ones are bulletproof. Those will stay on. These are a little bit more malleable, so you can move them a lot. They are a little bit softer pigment-wise, and so you can really trick your lips to look a little bit bigger or kind of work with your shape. And so I think there's something very special about it, but they're not as long lasting as her other ones or the Freck. So if I want something that's like bulletproof that I will have pretty much all day, I'll go for Freck or even Hourglass. But if I want something that literally contours my lips and works with my natural lip, this is where I go for. Uh, you can definitely build up the color. So I have here like the 2N that's obviously really deep. That's gonna show up, okay? But the way these blend in is so unique to a lip liner. But again, you're forfeiting a little bit the longevity. However, it's not bad. Don't think they just kind of wipe off. No, they stay on very long. It's still amazing. Um, but the, the formula is a little bit softer. So... I wanted to mention these. And then we have my West Med Atelier lipsticks. It's what I'm wearing today. I use the shade Rev first, and then I added a little bit of the Dinesa Myricks on. But um, I love the formula. I love the colors. I love everything about this release. Very expensive. I've done a review on them, so I'm not going to stay here long. But West Med Atelier definitely... I think did a fantastic job with these lipsticks. So did Merit. These are the three most used shades so far. From Merit, I have the color Antibes and then Maison. And the one I wore in my last video, I think, is Equestrian. So this is the deeper one, Maison, that is a more kind of everyday wearable rosy shade let's swatch the other one this is a deeper this is a fun color i love wearing that one because you can kind of fade it out and it's not as intense and then the most kind of wearable is the lightest one antibus i think i'm probably saying that wrong but it has a little bit more warmth in them uh, love the formula just fantastic release from Merit. And I think that's it. Again, I have the gloss from House Labs. I've talked about this so much and I still use it a lot. This is in Guava, I think. No, Macaron. I need to get the Guava. Oh, I don't think I have that one. I may pick that one up during the sale. Um, and actually, I'm gonna mention one more. I thought this video would be kind of short and concise, but yet here we are. The MAC honey love lipstick i think this was re-released the mac redid their lipsticks this is perfection i have used this lipstick so much it's matte but it's a softer matte it's not as um drying as it used to be and the color honey love is a beautiful for that really nude lip i definitely need a lip liner with this though and that's it guys those are my favorite products in the past month i hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure you're subscribed down below because i have a haul coming up i have some more wear tests of certain foundations that are This is the new Tom Ford Architecture Soft Matte. It's what I'm wearing today. I'm testing it out. I wanted to really test it out for a few days and then do a full day wear test so you guys can have all the information about a $150 foundation. Okay, I took one for the team. And so make sure you subscribe down below and I hope you guys enjoy it. Enjoy your sale and I will see you in my next video. Bye.